Hello and welcome to iNerdius and the 19th episode in my series on the 100 novels that I think best represent 20th century science fiction, The Beastmaster by Andre Norton. And I have to say that I don't think one could have a list of novels representing 20th century science fiction and not include something by Andre Norton. She was, after all, referred to as the Grande Dame of science fiction, and so her influence is quite extensive in the field, and it really just came down to deciding which of her novels to include. And I went with The Beastmaster, which was originally published in 1959, the same year as Starship Troopers, actually. It was adapted loosely in 1982 into a feature film which had a sequel and also um, a tv series and it spawned several other sequels uh, in book form as well the idea of a character who is psychically linked to his team which are a group of animals consisting of an african black eagle two meerkats a large puma-like cat and then later on a horse that he obtains is an interesting one that's been around for a while and obviously you can think about dr doolittle and tarzan although tarzan wasn't necessarily psychically linked nor was dr doolittle but the idea of being able to communicate with animals and have them on your side and doing your bidding is really compelling and i felt was something that set this book a little bit apart from the typical run-of-the-mill science fiction tale coming out at that time. It is written in a pulp type of a style. It's been regarded, I guess, as targeting a younger audience, but then again, you know, almost all science fiction was when this came out. The pulpy style isn't really my kind of thing, but it's a fairly quick read. The story is a little bit confusing at times when the action unfolds, especially towards the end. It kind of feels like what one would expect from an action adventure science fiction novel from the 50s. This edition that I have, I'm not really sure when it came out. I think it was probably the 70s. There is no date on the inside page. The inside front page just has the original date of 1959, but I know this had to have come out at least after 1975 because in the back it has this page where you can order these books and I know that The Exile Waiting didn't come out until 1975 so I'm guessing this is an edition from the late mid to late 70s. Again it's it has a lot of the things that one expects from science fiction it's got it's set on an alien world it has human characters it ha- interacting with alien aborigines It has the main character, Storm, who is a veteran of wars against aliens that destroyed Earth. And so he is now settling on this other world to try to make a home for himself. So that's kind of interesting. The idea of a post-war science fiction novel where the war ended recently enough that some of the soldiers are just being mustered out to begin their lives again with special care taken for those referred to as Terrans here who are from Earth, knowing that Earth has been destroyed. So that's kind of interesting. The main character is a Navajo, and so there are a lot of references to Navajo culture, although he himself was not raised in that culture, having decided to join the space service, or whatever you want to call it, and fight in the war. So that's kind of an interesting uh, take on a main character. Other than that, the alien world is pretty much friendly to humans. It has a very Earth-like atmosphere and soil, and so humans can eat the animals that they hunt that are native to that world. They can communicate, although not easily, with the aboriginals that live there. There's some interesting political ideas in here, although they're very surface level. But really, this is an example of a what I would call a sort of a late pulp science fiction novel. And I think Andre Norton specialized in that, at least around this time in her career. And so there you have it, the 19th book 
that I'm including on my imaginary shelf of the 100 novels that best represent science fiction of the 20th century, The Beast Master by Andre Norton. Thank you very much.